runners on base, let that ferment a little bit. Oh, yeah. And had come to fruition into oh. runs. The Padres have put up good numbers this year, Dick Enberg, versus left-handed pitching. Cole Hamels on the mound tonight could be a tough cookie. But in the past, earlier this year, Chris Denorfia, no problem against Jay Happ in Houston, taking the left-hander deep. And then another guy by the name of Cameron Mabin against James Russell in Chicago. My point is, righties get the chance to see the ball a little better off of lefties. And if the lefty can't bury that breaking ball and hit the ball on the inside part of the plate and leave it out over the plate, they can do some damage, which is shown right here. Now, this may surprise some of you in that the Padres have the worst hitting average in all of the major leagues yet against left-handed pitching. Look down at the bottom of the line. They're hitting 264, so the right-handed bats could come alive. The bad news is that Chris Norfia, who has the best average against southpaw pitching this year, pulled a muscle. It's not serious and will not be able to swing a bat for a couple or three days. And Chase Headley has been battling the flu, and uh, Buddy Black didn't know how much uh, he would be available maybe as a pinch hitter. Well, there are three guys in the lineup tonight for the San Diego Padres that are hitting left-handers extremely well. They're Mabin, Hundley, and Hudson. So hopefully they can set the table for other guys and get some runs tonight because like that guy with the flags, we need runs, we need runs. <laughs> hopefully that comes in playing tonight. All right, a great pitching matchup for you tonight. And here are our starters for the Phillies. It's... Uh, San Diego native Cole Hamels. He's one and one this year, but don't be misled by that in the 4-3-2 ERA. We're talking about one of the elite pitchers in all of the National League. And Clayton Richard, he loves to pitch at home. This will be his fourth start of the season. He looks for his second win of the season. So we're set to go. The Phils, the Padres, Petco Park on a party night this Friday in San Diego. enjoyed his best success pitching here at home and his profile brought to you by your San Diego County Cadillac dealer stop in they've got some attractive lease and purchase offers your San Diego County Cadillac dealer Richard's record here at Petco is 10 and 6 with a 275 ERA this is his 26th home start since coming here from the White Sox and the Jake TV deal He'll be facing Victorino, Polanco, and Rollins in the Philly first inning. The Phils are now 12 and 6. They started tonight 
only a half game ahead of Florida and the Marlins have beaten Colorado. So at this moment both teams at 12 and 6 and we're underway with a fastball strike. Victorino betting 310 but from the right side 353. On the inside edge. 0 and 2. Clayton is his last three times out. The outings this year he's really pounded that fastball on the inside part of the plate to righties. If he goes in there with some authority then he can back him off with that pitch as well then go away he should have a successful evening. That'll be popped out of play. Coming back toward the press box. The other thing about Clayton is that he's been around the plate this year. He's only walked five batters. Two strike pitch is inside. Tried to slide that one in under the hands of Victorino. Ground ball, third foul. That's Gonzalez playing third base tonight. Alberto in the lineup, hitting eighth uh, with Chase Headley suffering from the flu like conditions. Uh, that's gone r rampaged its way through yeah. the clubhouse of the Padres. Hopefully they'll be healthy by the end of this homestand. Line drive into left center field for a base hit. Maven over to cut it off. And Victorino stops with a long single. Charlie Manuel's batting lineup. Victorino with Placido Polanco. He's the number six hitter in the National League at 360. Jimmy Rollins at short. Ryan Howard had a long night last night. Four strikeouts. Right fielder Ben Francisco. Home run. He Gave the Phils an early one nothing lead. Rowley Banez, Carlos Ruiz catches tonight. Winston Valdez at second base and Cole Hamels on the mound. Polanco, a tough, tough out. Lifetime 300 plus hitter. And against Richard, that has not been the case. He's one for 10 against Clayton. Well, if Clayton is out with his pitches tonight. The infielders will be busy because we know that he can get some ground balls and break some bats. Cutters in to the righties and also change-ups away. Might see a lot of that tonight from Clayton. And I've got my lucky bobblehead up here tonight, Dick. Oh, I saw I'm, that. I'm breaking it out. And the, the big smile, the big lefty is in the power position. Clayton Richard bobblehead right there at your side. Mm -hmm. Foul back. You mean business tonight. You hey, are I'm, serious. I'm shaking it up. I'm a big fan of the uh, the left hander the southpaw and uh, he's even saying yes we're going <laughs> to pitch a gem tonight. Two strikes the count on Polanco. Get into a double play last night he leads the fills with six. That's among the National League leaders. High high that's fly ball into shallow left a long run for Ludwig. And he's there for the out. Let's check the Padre defense. Brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Call 1 800 New Tire. Gonzalez for Headley at third. Bartlett and Hudson, the double play combination with Cantu at first. Ludwig, Maben, and Venable, familiar outfield from left to right with Hundley behind the plate. And the man from Lafayette, Indiana, 6 5, Clayton Richard on the mound. There's that very clever pickoff move, and he had Victorino frozen. It's the best. It's around the league. Everybody knows it. And that's why if the Phils are going to run, they'll go on first move. Swing and a miss. Rollins hitting 260 from the right side, 263. Had a gift single last night in four at bats, so he's two for the last 22. Checks and it's one and one. Outside two and one. On the hotted pregame show, uh, with the uh, wine and food tasting tonight out in the park in the park, uh, Clayton's lovely wife Ashley was out there, was one of the guests. Nice. 
enjoying uh, the pregame activities. Slider. And uh, they were having her sample some of the local wines in more than something like uh, what, 15, 18 different wineries mm -hmm. are being uh, represented out there. She said, I like all wines. Keep pouring. That's my kind of woman. <laughs> <laughs> Strike three. Rollins caught looking. Well, he throws him on a fastball. Maybe Jimmy Rollins was looking for that slider or the cutter. And as I mentioned earlier, if he can keep him off balance and locate that fastball in the inner part of the plate to the righties, he's going to have a good night. Ryan Howard, the big left-handed hitting first baseman. 265, he checks in. His batting average on the year leads the club in home runs with three and tied RBIs with those 15. Tied with uh, Polanco. Bartlett comes in to say something uh, to Richard and then moves into the shift with Bartlett now playing on the second base side of the bag. Hudson playing shallow right field. Cantu holds on the runner and Gonzalez is way off the line at third. In fact, as soon as Jason Bartlett went back to the second base position, being the shortstop, he relayed a message to Gonzalez over at third, who's playing shortstop. You see the setup there. So he can relay the signs from catcher Nick Hundley. There he goes the other way, does Howard. A base hit into the corner and left. Victorino sprints around second to third on a base hit the opposite field for Ryan Howard. So the Phillies are at the corners with two outs here in the first. You talk about Ryan Howard beating the shift. The spray chart says on the ground pulling the baseball. Line drives the opposite way just a little bit but going due to the extreme opposite left field line. Something out of the ordinary. Well a man who's averaged 46 homers a year the last five seasons if he wants to go for singles sure. the defense will give him those. Ben Francisco, he had a bolt for a home run over the center field fence last night, just eluding Cameron Maven. Takes a change up for a strike. Popped him up. Foul territory. Can two. Does he have a play? No. Into about the third row. The Phillies last night. Had their own struggle as the Padres well know of delivering with men in scoring position. They had nine men in scoring position and able to send only one of them home. And lately they're only five of 35. A 143 average for Charlie Manuel. Two strikes on Francisco. Had a long Chad on down in the dugout before the game with Charlie Manuel, one of the delightful men in this game. Popped up into right field, shallow, easing in is Venable. And Richard gets out of trouble in the first inning. A couple of Phil singles. They're left at first and third. Coming up, Bartlett, Hudson, and Cantu for the Padres.
long lean left hander Cole Hamels San Diego native you see him pitch you think of Steve Carlton in kind of physique. What was not on that graphic is pitching record this year one and one is that Petco he's two and one his ERA one five seven. Bartlett punches that one foul. Hamels uh, Rancho Bernardo High School with that excellent scholastic baseball program drafted nine years ago. The 2 and 17th overall player picked. Two and one. And you can bet there's a lot of friends and family, former high school teammates here to watch him pitch tonight. Sharply hit, but Polanco able to stab it and throws out Bartlett. Let's take a look at uh, Buddy Black's starting lineup tonight, brought to you by Evans Tire and Service Centers, home of the free alignment. Bartlett uh, with a six game hitting streak hit the ball sharply but right at Polanco then it's Hudson Cantu Hundley moves into the cleanup spot tonight Ryan Ludwig bats fifth Maven sixth will Venable and right seventh and Alberto Gonzalez for Headley hits eighth at third base. Hudson number six in the National League in most walks he's walked 13 times his average dipping down to 242. Good change up. And like Clayton Richard, Cole Hamels likes to work quickly. His repertoire consists of four pitches fastball, cutter, curve, split. Broken bat roller to short. Rollins across. And another easy ground ball out. Defensive lineup brought to you by North County GMC, a Southern California tradition. For over 20 years, the Phils defensively, Polanco and Rollins, they each with a assist here early. Valdez and Howard on the right side. Ibanez in left, Victorino in center, Francisco the right fielder, Ruiz, who led the Phils in hitting last year. Batting average is behind the plate. Can two against Cole Hamill in his career is seven for 25. Three of the seven hits home runs can two off this left hander. Works the outside corner one and one. Good fastball. Two and one. You Mentioned. see what, what Hamels is doing right there. He peppers that outside corner to the right. He can't do for a strike. And then he puts a little wrinkle in one, a cut fastball down and in. He's got to stay out of the heart of the plate. Hitters count here. Out in front of a changeup. <laughs> That's some pitching right there, Dick. Hitters count, fastball count, two and one. Cole Hamels pulls the string and can't chew his way out in front of it. You know, it brings up an interesting point because in his first outing of the year, he went two and two thirds, gave up six runs. Well, all the infielders had a chance in this first yep. inning. Third, short, and second on three ground ball outs. And after one, no score.
football cards. Also an Easter egg hunt and breakfast at the park before the game and kids field day after the game. The Easter egg hunt, by the way, is going to be out on the wiffle ball diamond beyond the right field fence. Get your tickets at Padres.com. You know, I'm going to do like the players, Dick, when they we, we want to talk, tell you a secret. So I'm going to call this next pitch, all right? And I don't want anybody to know. Did you sleep with that last night? Slept with my glove. <laughs> Raul Ibanez. 209 is average. One and two the count. Got him. Second strikeout. Good slider. Well, congratulations uh, to you, Mark Grant. Uh, highly successful luncheon today. The Star Pal luncheon over 500 people as the MC. Brilliant as always. Oh well, thank you very much. It was a great event. Raised some money for the uh, inner city youth programs. Good bunch of people we have here in San Diego. Carlos Ruiz and he hits one deep to left field. If that's fair, it's trouble and it hooks foul. Not by much. About eight seats off that brick wall and left. Strike one. <laughs> Ruiz out in front of it. Hits it high. Carlton Fisk like. Mm, it just did yeah. die foul. One and one. We mentioned Ruiz, 32 year old Panamanian, hit 302 last year. That was the best average by the Phils. Nice to have a catcher that hits 300. Mm -hmm. Change up, and it's one and two. Lifted out of play. You know, Dick, just to elaborate about that luncheon today, the Star Pal, the Police Athletic League, what a great job the police. Firemen, all those guys here and women in San Diego that go out of their way to help the youth in San Diego. Back to the mound. Richard throws to can too, and that's always an adventure. And he gets his man. Brings up Winston Valdez. But one of the things uh, I moved down from Los Angeles to Rancho Santa Fe and now in La Jolla uh, back in 1983, and it became immediate the very first year here. San Diego must lead the world in charitable events. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're so conscious of helping out others yep. here, the public of San Diego. We can all be very proud of that. Absolutely. Winston Valdez, a 286 mark early. Saw him as a pinch hitter last night. And here's some of the folks. Uh, Fireman and Chief Lansdowne. You know. Yeah, it's good to get in with him. He's the police chief. How was the chow? It was very good. Had macaroni and cheese. Grounded to third and backhanded by Gonzalez right off the line and throws him out. And yeah, we'll be back with the luncheon menu and Mark Grant. Oh, I'm salivating. <laughs> Upcoming Hundley, Ludwig, and Maben.
Our Skycam shot brought to you by Hughes Marino because where you do business matters. Nick Hundley leading Padre batter 339. Tied for home runs and RBIs three homers and nine runs batted in. It's a measure of how difficult runs have come for the Padres that they don't have a single player in double digits in RBIs. Nine is the tops. The Phils have two men with 15. 0 oh and 2, curveball. Now, as a hitter, 0 oh and 2, right? Against a guy like Hamels. So, what do you do? You, do you look hard stuff in? Do you look for the soft changeup away? Another ground ball. Rollins at short. Fires to Howard for the out. Four up, four down, all on the infield. And that was a cutter if you're keeping score at home. The cut fastball down around the knees that induced the ground ball off the bat of Nick Hundley. Let's check it out. Cut fastball, just a little bit of a break. Hard to the plate, but look where it was. It was down. That's that's a tough ball to hit on the line and elevate. Ludwig steps in and takes a high fastball. Ryan took the collar last night, so his average back down under 200. Fastball 93 from the left hander. The world got to know in the 2008 World Series the most valuable player for the Phils. Slap foul. And it's one and two. Well, along with the wine and food festival tonight, three dozen wineries. I cut it short, 36 of them. College night, too. Check.com. The college kids got a special ticket price tonight, and it's uh, Earth Day, and we want to talk about that later. Inside, two and two. Here's some of the gang from our local campuses. That's a great idea, isn't it? Hey. The back into the crowd. It remains two and two. And tomorrow night is the Padre Six Pack Tube Cooler Night. Twenty five thousand mm -hmm. of those uh, give a, given away, and then the ball gloves eight thousand on Sunday. So baseball and uh, you take home a prize too. Outside change up three and two. Don't be surprised if Cole Hamels flips up one of those cutters. Three and two fastball count. Ryan Ludwig is looking for the heater, so he wants to put a little wrinkle in one. Outside ball four. Fastball just misses. Padres have their first base runner. Try to end a string of 13 consecutive scoreless innings, San Diego. Here's Cameron Maven, 246, his average, three home runs. One of those Padres that uh, has done well against left handed pitching. Change up. Well, that's uh, why this whole rotation, all of these Philly starters, could be the number one starter on most every team in the league. They have, you know, five, six pitches, and all the different speeds are up and down, in and out, take something on, put something off. You, you, you make a great point because when you look around baseball in general, you know, there are guys out there that can pinpoint their fastball or they can throw their secondary pitches for strikes. But when you've got a, a rotation like Halliday, Oswald, Hamels, and Lee. Line drive, fair ball inside the line, going down in the corner. Racing around second is Ludwig the third. And finally digging it out of the corner is Ibanez as Maven pulls into second. It's second and third with one out for the Padres. Cole Hamels is one of those guys you can throw any of his pitches for strikes when he wants to. That's why he's so good like the rest of the rotation. But at times... He will hang that breaking ball over the heart of the plate. And what does that do? It speeds up the bat of the right-handed hitter. He places it in between the pillow and the third baseman. And the Padres threatening here in the second inning. 
Two men in scoring position. Can Venable deliver even a ground ball here? We'll get a run home as the Philly infield playing back. And out goes Ruiz to chat with his left handed pitcher. As we said uh, in the pregame show, we went back 19 games, this being the 20th, but after 19 games a year ago, Will Venable was hitting 262 with four homers and 11 runs batted in. This year he's hitting more than 100 points under that with no home runs and three RBIs. Not a very good swing there. That's that cutter. Yep. Trying to get an early run for Clayton Richard. That one bounces in. You know, just to uh, button up the thought about this great rotation that the Phillies have. You know, there are pitchers with above average stuff. There are pitchers with average stuff. But when you have four guys that have two or three pitches that are above average and can locate, that's pretty nasty. Line foul. Turn that one around and drive it up the alley, and the Padres would have two plus a runner still going. Well, if I was a betting guy, I'm betting, I'm, I'm guessing slider down the way right here to Will Venable. Hamill's thinking strikeout. And just getting a piece of it. Venable still alive. Barely nicked that one. A cutter. You know, that might work to the advantage of Cole Hamels. The cutter fouled off of the plate, so kind of a changeup type pitch. This next pitch would be that softer slider down and away, kind of get him out in front a little bit. But Will definitely has to think left field right here. Way outside. That looked like a curveball, maybe a hard slider. Yeah, he just wrapped it a little bit more. So full count. Venable, one away. Ludwig at third. Maven with a double at second. Got him swinging. And the Wolves with runners in scoring position and less than two out continue. First strikeout for Hamels. But when a pitcher is in a pinch and the hitters look to hit the fastball, what does Hamels throw? A changeup yep. out of the strike zone. Yep. And now he's going to walk Alberto Gonzalez intentionally to get to Clayton Richard. Now don't discount Clayton Richard. Although he's 0 for 6, he has a couple of RBIs. That's as many as Jason Bartlett, and only one less than Venable. And Clayton has shown a good eye. One of those RBIs came uh, on a bases loaded walk in St. Louis. The other was on a squeeze bunt against the Cardinals. Of course, that's not a play here with two out. There's a strike. Padres at every pillow, base is full. One and one. The other aspect of this. Philly rotation is they all throw strikes. They rarely walk anyone. Yeah. A couple of walks here, one intentional is out of character. Fly ball to the shortstop. Wouldn't hit very hard, just a soft liner. And the Padres are gone. Bases loaded. All stranded again. No score after two.
bit of daylight is gone and full night. As we go to the third inning here at Petco Park, Cole Hamels and then the leadoff man Victorino and Polanco for Philadelphia. Hamels is 0 for 4 this year. Count goes 1 and 1. Not bad, 158. And he sends one just over the leaping fly of Gonzalez. And there's the difference. Richard hit a similar ball, but hit it more towards short, and that gave. Collins a chance to catch it. Hamels hits the same ball but goes the short way over the third baseman's head. Just cleared him by about a foot. And if you look at the pitch though, look where it is. It's above the belt. It's elevated. If that ball is down around the thigh or the knees, it's probably a little looper to Alberto Gonzalez at third base. Instead a leadoff single and now Victorino who with two strikes on him singled the left center field. His first at bat. Three hits now for the Phils. Ball inside. Shut out for Philadelphia last night. Tied the major league lead. It was uh, the fourth for them on the season. Got to figure they're going to lead the league with this pitching staff. Yeah. Tomorrow, Joe Blanton, who's a solid starter, but compared to the other four, not exactly the Hall of Fame credential starter that the Rest of Charlie Manuel's staff exudes. And you know what? I'm sure that Joe Blanton is the one guy that says, you know what? Hey, I'm just glad to be in a rotation like this. I'll, I'll, I will gladly grab that rock every fifth day and help contribute to the other four guys. And with this offense, hey, you never know. Joe Blanton could do a little pitching too now. Cliff Lee, one of the aces, will miss this series. He'll pitch on Monday. He got him. There's that pickoff move. And Hamels caught mapping. And he is out. One, three, four, one. Well, look at the lead from Cole Hamels. It's like a little league lead. He's like six feet off the bag. And Clayton Richard puts his A move on him and then completes the put out. Hey, that's huge. Anytime a guy can get a pickoff like that, catch a guy napping. Makes it a long jog to the dugout if you're Cole Hamels. Look at <laughs> Cole was looking towards home plate, anticipating the pitch being thrown. He can't be a spectator. Count now two and two on Victorino with one out. Help yourself in a lot of different ways. I imagine Hamill's getting a little uh, raspberries down in that dugout. Three and two. Hey, we got a big time Padre fan watching on Channel 4 tonight. She was rooting for the Padres for many years, and I saw her at the Star Pal luncheon today. She's watching right now. Bonnie Dumanis, the DA. Good person to know. <laughs> the district attorney here in San Diego. So, Bonnie, thanks for watching. Good to see you today. Full foul, and we were at the luncheon as well, and Mayor Sanders was there. Of course, he's a big Padre mm -hmm. and a sports fan, and Major General Dave Mann, the commanding general of the U.S. Army recruiting. Uh, was there with his men, a very impressive group of Army leaders. And uh, it's interesting, they said, you know, they understand, the U.S. Army, that this has been a Navy and Marine town all through the years, and they want to develop more of a presence of the U.S. Army here. Popped up back toward us, that may make it in here. Just missed. And that more. San Diego County young men and women sign on with the U.S. Army than the Navy and Marines and Coast Guard combined. Mm. And low ball four. Victorino, top base dealer with four, is the board with one out.
Placido Polanco fly to left his first time. I fly ball to shallow left. Hardest to strike out in the National League in the first two weeks of the season. He struck out only once in every 20 and a half at bats. Well, if you're looking for a double play, here's your guy because Polanco leads the club in that category. GIDP grounded in double plays with six. One of those last night. Mm -hmm. Step off. Victorino dancing away from the bag at first, uh, daring Clayton Richard. Clayton Richards thinking, what the Mikhail Borishnikov is going on over there, going back and forth. It's a little of the Hawaiian hula that he's yeah. got there brought over from the island. Two and oh, cutter misses. We're in the top of the third, one out. Victorino at first base with a walk, no score. Three and zero. Oh. The Dodgers pounded the Cubs today, twelve to two. Florida defeats Colorado, four to one. The Mets beat Arizona, four to one. Atlanta, San Francisco, just starting. A four pitch uh, walk to Polanco. So back to back walks. That sets the table for Rollins and Howard. You know, I remember when Clayton Richard came over to the Padres talking to some scouts talking about Clayton Richard there are times when he will hit a spurt to will he just get a case of wildness. Sometimes you know he works quickly as it is already. You can work quickly in between pitches but you should slow down your mechanics to get your arm in a good position to throw consistent strikes and Clayton knows that sometimes he just has a tendency to rush a little bit. How big is that pickoff of Hamels oh, yeah. otherwise the bases would be loaded with no one out. Rollins took a third strike his first at bat. A drive to center field. Maven floats back. He's got the second out. Victorino thought that ball might get over the head of Maven, so he played it a little farther off second base, ready to roll, and so he couldn't tag and move to third. Not that that's such a big play because with two outs, the man at third, not the same as one out, of course. So Rollins jolts one on the nose but to the center fielder and that brings up Ryan Howard with a shift on he elected to go to the opposite field with a solid line drive single with men at first and second the Padres can't utilize the shift they play it more straight up although Orlando Hudson a couple of steps out on the grass at second base and Cantu way behind the runner at first trying to guard the line. Starts him with a fastball. Howard doesn't get many of those. Well, when he got that hit in the first inning, Dick, it was a fastball away. That was one fastball there that was a good strike. Maybe that might be the only fastball that Howard sees at this at bat. High fly ball. Will it stay fair? It's slicing down the foul territory and left field and out of play. Got a slider there. Yep. So Hundley's going to go out and talk with Clayton Richard now with uh, two on, two out, and two strikes on Howard. They want to be sure that mm -hmm. they know exactly the pitch where they want it to be thrown. He, he might have even said to him, "Hey, you know what? Got to be careful on that last pitch. He, it was it was a very hittable pitch. He fouled it off in the stands. No harm done. Now let's make a good quality pitch here. 2 Remember last night he chased some breaking balls in the dirt out of the hand of Matt Latos. Let's see if he goes down and away here." Yeah, and that'll advance both runners. Too much down and away. Wild pitch. It's a wild inning for Clayton Richard. After the single by Hamels and picking off Hamels, walks Victorino, walks Polanco, and now Wild pitches them both into scoring position. Well, Nick did everything he could to square himself up to keep that ball in front of him, and just luck of the draw, the carom, too far away, and everybody advances. 
One and two. High drive, deep right field, up the alley, and that ball is against the wall. Two run score. Howard around second. He's going to go for a triple, the big man. Here's the throw. He's in there. Two walks, two runs, as Howard has his 16th and 17th RBIs of the year. Lots of Philly fans enjoyed that smash up the alley. And too fat of a pitch, and Clayton knows it. You see the reaction. That looks like a little cutter, thigh high, outer half, one and two count. First base is open, and we know that Ryan Howard at times will chase. That was just too fat of a pitch, and Clayton knows that he made a big-time mistake to Ryan Howard. First pitch swinging as Ben Francisco in foul territory. Cantu is calling. And the inning comes to an end. Two runs on two hits. The two runs on men that arrive on base by walks. And the Phillies grab the early lead. Southern California's premier dental implant center by Hughes Marino because where you do business matters and by Cox high speed internet power all your devices with the fastest internet in San Diego. Well, Cole Hamels can lean on a two run advantage as he goes to work in the bottom of the third leadoff man Jason Bartlett hit the ball solidly but right at the third baseman Polanco for a ground out. Hudson and Cantu to follow. Big Ryan Howard. Couple of walks, a wild pitch, and Howard's long triple to right center, his first triple of the year. Oh my, that was a generous call. Looked a bit inside. A cutter. One and two. You know the one thing that you just hate with the way the Padres have been going as far as offensively speaking, you hate to play catch up, especially with a guy like Cole Hamels if he gets into a groove. Chop toward third. That's a tough play. Polanco, the throw gets him by a half stride. Well done. Orlando Hudson, he grounded out to short his first at bat. Nice two handed grab and smooth transition by Polanco. See him field that baseball on his right knee, enabling his arm to get a good throwing position on the move. Pulls the string on that breaking pitch, 74. Upstairs 2 and 0 on the fastball. Well 2 nothing advantage for Cole Hamels in his Phillies and last year it's interesting he only received two runs or less in 14 
of 33 starts. He had to do some pitching. And he got no run support in 11 starts. So. Misses again 3 and 0. Oh. He had to do some pitching. It wasn't all about the offense. Wasn't getting that much support. And the old automatic. Just 27 is Hamels. Out of play against the Padres lifetime four and two two and one here at Petco and Stenchy a two seven five ERA. Line drive base hit Hudson rifles one to left Padres second hit. One away, tying run, Jorge Cam two comes to the plate. And with the three two count, Cole Hamels looks up at that scoreboard and says, Okay, I'm up two nothing. I'm gonna try to spot a fastball down and away. It leaks, and Orlando Hudson spins on that one for a base knock. Cole Hamels had Hudson earn his way on there by getting that base hit. Hudson with seven stolen bases and seven tries. He had only ten all last year. One and one. How to play. Hudson with seven stolen bases, the National League leader, three men with eight. Away. Tabata, Pittsburgh, born Houston and Kemp, Los Angeles. Kemp not only hitting with power and great average, stealing bases, he's off to a two superstar. There goes Hudson. Soft ground ball to short. Rollins across. Two away. Hudson into scoring position. For Nick Hundley. Well, by having Hudson running on that pitch, uh, probably not a double play ball, but they would have gotten Hudson right had he not been running at second for the fours, and then a slower runner can too would have been safe in the fielder's choice. So Moving Hudson on the play gets him into scoring position. Hundley who has nine RBIs. Fastball strike. Initial reaction from Nick was I didn't like that call. Did you see his reaction? But he can't gripe because when he goes behind the plate, he's gonna want that call for his guy. Cutter that uh, landed just in the batter's box. You know, sometimes that that pitch that he throws, you know, he'll bounce and guys will offer at it. Especially if you start with a first pitch strike right at the knees, bring it down a little farther, and guys will swing at that pitch in the dirt. Good cut there, but fouled it back. Fastball one and two. Got him swinging. Another man stranded in scoring position. No runs a hit. And a man left. After three here at Petco, the Phillies lead it two nothing.
And brought to you by AT&T Wireless. Which member of the Phillies coaching staff was nicknamed the Red Devil during his playing career in Japan? Hmm. Answer in the last half of the inning. Top of the fourth. Ibanez, Ruiz, and Valdez. Three Z's. The bat for Philadelphia. Surname ending in Z. Ibanez, Ruiz, and Valdez. Raul struck out swinging first time. Hopefully that pulled very foul. Hopefully Clayton Richard could put those guys to sleep with the Z's, right? Quick one, two, three inning right here for the left hander. Atlanta gets an early three nothing lead up at San Francisco. Graves at bat top of the third. We'll see that Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday afternoon. Two strike pitch wasted outside. Strike three called. Caught the outside corner with a fastball. And Ibanez has struck out for the second time. That's number three for Clayton. How about this comparison brought to you by San Diego Toyota dealers? We've got what it takes. The Phillies, first nine games. Just ripping the cover off the ball, 334 in the last nine games, 199. But with that pitching staff, you hit 199 and they're five and four in those nine games. And I think what else you could take to that comparison is that any team, whether you're the top of the division or the bottom of the division, teams are going to go through those little spurts. You try to minimize those. Obviously, which you said they were about 500, 5 and 4, Dick, with that 199 average. Well, it sure helps to have a rotation like they've got, though. Mm -hmm. Ruiz tapped back to the mound his first time. And he works the count to 3 and 0. Oh. A four pitch walk, so Clayton in one of those. Uh, Ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four grooves as he was in the third inning when he walked Victorino and Polanco back to back, and Howard sent them home with that long triple to right center. Let's take a look at that last pitch. It was a changeup. It's a pretty darn good pitch. But when you're not throwing strikes, those umpires tend to think ball, not strike. Played umpire, umpire Tim Welke. Looked like Nick may have, uh, you know, he was set up on the inside part of the plate, may have taken that one out of his own a little bit. Still, though, to me, a strike is a strike. I mean, it's where the ball crosses the plate, right? At least that's what it says in the rule book, Jim. <laughs> a kiss is just a kiss. A strike is just a strike. <laughs> that's right. Valdez grounded one. Down the third baseline, flirting with a double, but Gonzalez made a good backhand play and threw him out in the second inning. Off the fist, Gonzalez goes the short way, and that's all they'll get. Ruiz erased. Valdez safe on the fielder's choice, 5 4. And Cole Hamels. Punched a single over the head of third baseman Gonzalez his first time up and then was picked off. Otherwise uh, the Phils would be leading three nothing. Ball one. You know Dick one other thing I want to mention remember pregame tonight they had all the firefighters out. Mm -hmm. It was great the burn Institute tonight. All the great things that they do for burn victims. Jim Flores heads that organization does a great job. It's a uh, it's an event that they have each and every year it seems to get bigger and bigger so Jim and his crew there at the burn Institute do a great job and the Padres are proud to salute them before yep. the game tonight. Two and oh. 
Yeah, showing some respect for Hamels. And the pinpoint that slider and misses. Mm -hmm. Hamill's wife, Heidi, pretty talented athlete. She was uh, one of the competitors on Survivor in their sixth season. Wow. I couldn't do that. Not enough food. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that. The entree was macaroni and cheese. Oh, yeah, cheese well, that was just for the today? sides orange chicken, oh, okay. salmon, oh, pork, oh. white rice, brown rice. Well, I feel better nice. now, and so does Clayton Richard as he strikes out the opposing pitcher. That gives him four. No runs, no hits, and a man left for the Phils in the fourth inning. Trivia answer. Our question was which member of the Phillies coaching staff was nicknamed the Red Devil during his playing career, six years in fact in Japan? Charlie Manuel, the skipper of the Phils, who was quite a home run slugger in Japan and was named the most valuable player one season there. That's hard to do for a foreigner. Mm -hmm. Ludwig swings at the first ball and sends a high fly ball out to shallow right, and second baseman. Valdez makes the catch. Grew up a uh, son of a preacher man in Virginia. He stuttered uh, in his youth. Came up for a brief time with the Minnesota Twins. I remember calling games. Uh, Manuel was a good pinch hitter off the bench, a left handed bat. He was making 19,000, the most he ever made. And he huh. said he wasn't getting a regular job. Guys like Oliva and some of those other names, uh, Carew and Killebrew, kept him out even with the DH. They couldn't use him, so he went to Japan. He said they gave him a hundred thousand dollars back in '77. Good and, baseball man. And uh, there's a very interesting story about the fact that uh, he was having a sensational season, about to set some home run records, and he got beamed. They had to put three pieces of metal in his jaw and all kinds of screws that stayed there for over a year, and he came back that season and still. Hit 37 home runs. <laughs> Maven, who has a double, a ball and two strikes on him. One out in the bottom of the fourth, and the Phils leading 2 0. I asked him what he learned in six years in Japan, other than some language, and he said, I can speak a little Japanese. He said, I wouldn't mind having a Japanese player. He goes around. That's the third strikeout for Hamels. He said that, oh, oh uh, the idea, I, I asked him first, you know, how did he get that nickname, the Red Devil? He said, well, I had a short fuse, and 
I was always angry and mad. I had in baseball language, I had a red blank, <laughs> and uh, and so <laughs> I was a red devil to the Japanese. Or you know, so polite. No, yep. I was just the antithesis of what uh, Japanese right. players uh, stood for. <laughs> he said, but I did learn to control that. And he said something very nice, and it uh, applies to all of us. Venable swings and misses, one and one. And to our children, he said, what I learned in Japan was who I was and who I wanted to be. You know, it, it, that's the sign of maturity, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Get to that point in life, oh, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. And here's what I want to be. And what he wanted to be is where he is right now, big league manager. And doing a fine job at that. One and two, and Venable takes it over but low. Will struck out swinging first time. Padres now have been scoreless 15 straight innings and a one out away from 16 in a row. Full count. Oh, he humped it up to 94. And Cole Hamels has proven tonight that he will throw that slider or that cutter. Fastball in. Follow back. Yeah, trying to uh, tie him up a little bit. Next delivery will be his 70th pitch. Kick into Ruiz here. Fastball away. Just missed. That's the third walk from Hamels. See where that pitch was. It's a darn good pitch. That is a pitcher's pitch. That's a strike. Yep. It touched the bottom of the strike zone. That's you know exactly what yep. you called a pitcher's pitch. So hopefully the Padres, they catch a break here, could keep it going for a little two-out rally. Good breaking ball drops in for a strike. Here's a situation where Venable, good base stealer, could go, but if he steals, they walk Gonzalez again, and then they're pitching to the pitcher. That's right. That's what happened like back in the second inning with the bases loaded and Richard made out. 0 oh and 2 to Alberto. Intentionally walked back in the second. Venable goes anyway, and that one chopped. Foul. Yes. Ruiz making sure he didn't kick a dirt clod and skip back into fair territory. Mm -hmm. Let's check our leaderboard brought to you by Los Primos, home of the Monster Burrito. Get your $5 meal deal for a limited time only. Padres leading the major leagues in stolen bases, 27. And they're 10 ahead of uh, the second place National League teams, the Reds and Mets with 17. Well, that's fine and dandy, right? You steal a base, you get in the scoring position. But we all know that the numbers runners in scoring position not doing well in that category, so... Need to shake it up a little bit. There he goes again. Brown ball. Nice two hopper for Rollins, and he gets the out at first. And the Padres shut out for four innings tonight and for 16 in a row against Philly pitching.
Game Recap brought to you by Murray Lampert Construction. Architectural design and quality remodeling under one roof. Visit murraylampert.com or call 619-285-9222 and see what they can do for you. Ms. Grinberg. All right. Make it sing. Mark Grant. Friday night baseball at Petco. We go to the fifth inning and a high pop up by Victorino. Shortstop Bartlett circling under it for the first out. So Victorino, a single, a walk. He wanted the two walks given up by Richard in the third inning, and both men came home on Ryan Howard's triple to the 400 foot sign in right center. Just to complete the story on Charlie Manuel that year when in the middle of the season he was having a great year and got beamed and there was some thought that you know they just didn't want him to win the home run title mm -hmm. as a foreigner. Well he was in the hospital for four to six weeks. The doctors advised him to go home that he shouldn't play. He refused to came back and finished the year and won the home run title. And there's the punchline there too, and the Japanese then voted him the most valuable player. Ah, How good is that? That's a great story. And country boy. And what you know, I'm, I'm just guessing. What are the chances those Japanese doctors saying, "Hey, go home," because they have vested interest in the teams. <laughs> hey, go home. We don't. I don't want you to be my team. <laughs> that's a great story. Two and one, and three and one now to Blanco, who is flying to left. Walked and scored. Richard now pitch count up to 77 with this next offering. And the underlying story in all of that is that you know the Japanese understanding here was a man with considerable talent and courage and. The fortitude to come back and take it on again and win the batting or the home run title. Full count. Slicing into foul territory. Tough play for Can two. And that gets into the first row. Hey, your buddy down there at um, the Sony Club, the so Sony Home Plate Club. Right. You know the the uh, head bartender down there, Keith. Keith. Isn't that his name? Good egg. He, he, he's working. You know how these uh, mix masters or right. mixologists, I guess they are. Mm -hmm. You know they try to come up with new drinks. There's a contest for the best right. drink and all of that. He, he may have a winner here. You okay. know. Okay. He he said to give this one to you. Oh, he did. Uh, it's, huh? it's a it's a special it's a special drink. This ball hit in almost the same spot. Venables over there this time, and he's got the out. Two away. So our pal Keith, he calls it the runs rampant. Runs rampant. Does that sound good? Okay. One part heart. Got to have it. One part skill. It's good to have. One part timing. Everybody needs it. Splash of luck. And an olive. Ah, oh, an olive to cap it yeah, off. Yeah, and that's your runs rampant. Well, start mixing it up, Keith. I will. Gladly partake in a social sparkler. You think folks aren't trying hard around here? <laughs> Two away, Jimmy Rollins. Rollins struck out in line. It really hit a shot to center field. A ball and a strike. Hit it well again, but Maben positioned for the out. So Jimmy Rollins hitting in tough luck. Phil's going order. We're at the halfway mark in this one. Four and a half in the book, and the Phil's by two.
Sierra's Rincon Casino. If a home run has hit this inning, Mr. Grenberg, text Homer, H O M E R, to 269 411. Well, let's hope that uh, folks will be uh, dialing that number as Clayton Richard leads off the fifth inning. He was up with the bases loaded in the second, hit a soft liner to short. One and one. Bartlett and Hudson to follow. And the Padres went 18 straight innings in Chicago without scoring a run and and finally came away with that win 5 4 on getaway day. Now they're at 16 straight innings scoreless against the Phils. And it's taking on the same character as last night against Roy Oswald. That uh, you stay close enough even though you're trailing was three nothing last night and you hope that the starting pitcher finally uh, gets his innings in and maybe your bullpen can beat their bullpen. Goes down swinging does Richard and that's strikeout number four. And indeed last night Padres had the bases loaded in the seventh inning and could not score and they had the time run at the plate in the bottom of the ninth inning and Brad Hops struck out so there were a couple of chances. Got to be patient hope that Richard can hold the fills at these two runs see what happens down the stretch. And I'm sure Cole Hamels is the type of pitcher where he's good for about 100 110 pitches right that was number 80 for the left hander. Last two times out for Cole Hamels, he has gone seven innings. There's Major General Dave Mann had a chance to meet him today, Commanding General of the U.S. Army recruiting. Some of his uh, men there recruiting uh, some of San Diego's finest. Well, the word throughout that luncheon today was over and over again praising the the Padre organization and how they support the military. Of course, every Sunday Military Day here and. High fly ball on the infield. And Rollins wants it, takes it for the second out. So the Padres have called out the military. They got the Army here today trying to help them out. <laughs> you got you know, bartender Keith trying to help them out. Everybody's trying to get into the act. The firemen. Yeah. The college kids. Bernie Mazzola, Sam Liederkron saw that earlier today. They want the Padres to win a game here. <laughs> Got to keep plugging along, right? The big O, O dog, takes a strike. He has one of the two Padre hits, a line single to left. A cutter, 0 and 2. Well, this is the 41st anniversary of Earth Day, 1970. And uh, while we're praising the good things going on around here at Petco, we want to share that with you. We'll wait till the next inning. Backs him out of there with a 93 mile an hour fastball. Atlanta now leading 4 0 in the fourth at San Francisco. That one punched into the upper deck on the right side. Well, you see what Hamels is doing here. It's just in and out, out and in, up and down, changing speeds with that changeup. I mean, he, and he's working quickly. His timing is right on tonight. Like an elevator, up and that's down, right. in and out, back and forth. That's right. Elevator man, Cole Hamels. <laughs> Otis. <laughs> Good call. I was thinking the same thing. Two and two. Long on a miss, strike three. So the Padres out in order again. Two strikeouts to add to Hamill's total. He now has five in the game.
And welcome back to nothing Philadelphia as we go to the sixth inning middle of the order Howard Francisco and Ibanez for Philadelphia. Single and a triple for Howard but he rolls this one to Hudson for the first out. One pitch one out. And Ben Francisco comes up. Hey listen up all you human termites all you can eat seats. <laughs> They're still available twenty nine fifty. Menu includes Wiener Schnitzel, hot dogs, popcorn, peanuts, soda, water. Get all you can eat seats at Padres.com or call 619 795 5555. You can wash down those seats with a nice cold soda. That'd be yeah. nice. Now, does that mean when they say all you can eat, in other words, if you want to have four hot dogs and three bags of peanuts, you get all? Yeah. Just stock up, eat all you want. How can you beat Full that? Full feed bag. 29.50 plus the the game ticket. That's true. <laughs> Just strap it on and go <laughs> go to Chompin. Back to Richard. There's a soft toss over to first base, and Francisco is out. So that's uh, seven straight recorded out for Richard. See now, this kid, if he was sitting, he can he can eat the popcorn till his heart's content. Just go at yeah. it. Just fill the next one up. Oh, there's stuff flying all over the place. <laughs> Got to wear goggles around that kid. It's no fun if you don't make a mess too. <laughs> like you said the other day, you know, your dad said just throw the wrappers and peanut shells on, right. on the floor That's there right. at the ballpark. First pitch strike to Ibanez. He's swung out, swung and uh, missed strike three and called out on strikes. 0 for two. And another chance for Richard. Boy, that's a nice, easy one, two, three inning. Then he threw only four or five pitches. How many? Six. We go to the bottom of the six. Padres need two to tie. Give me some of that popcorn. Cam shot is brought to you by Mossy Ford, Mossy Toyota. Visit us in Pacific Beach or online at Mossy.com. Home half for the sixth inning. Cantu, Hundley, and Ludwig scheduled against Cole Hamels. He's allowed only two hits. And he bends Cantu back, but the ball catches the corner, a curve. Double by Maven in the second, single by Hudson in the third, and that's been it. Change up and can't do way out in front. Oh, he's he, mixing it up, isn't he? He's used that pitch very effectively on Jorge. You know, that's one thing I noticed about Roy Oswald last night. He's using more of his change up, and that is nasty. Just fouled. In fact, Charlie Manuel talking about that, really pleased at how well, mm -hmm. you know, he knows Oswald as a top notch pitcher, but he's even better with that change up. Sure. Oh, yeah. 
That's a bad at bat. And two. Sixth strikeout victim of Hamels. And Hundley comes up, grounded out and struck out. It's the changeup. You can peek into his glove. Same arm action and the dipsy do down and away. Good movement. There's the grip, the, the circle change grip. And just throw it like your fastball. Nick Hundley digs in. The, the skipper manual is saying that, you know, having four, you know, A plus pitchers in the rotation, Hamels, of course, being one of those. Cliff Lee, Roy Oswald, and then the Cy Young Award winner that we'll see Sunday, Roy Holiday. That what it has done is they're so competitive, they're trying to outdo each other mm. to even be better. I believe it. You could appreciate that. Absolutely. Fly ball to left field. Softly, Abanez comes in and makes the catch. And you know what else that does when you talk about a rotation like that of the Philadelphia Phillies? You talk about limiting losing streaks. I mean, these guys are human. Don't get me wrong. And yeah, there's a chance that the Phillies can lose six, seven in a row, eight in a row. Who knows what's going to happen? But Charlie Manuel will take his chances with those guys in rotation. And don't forget Joe Bland. That guy can pitch too now. Now at the end of the season, we'll see what their longest losing streak is. That'll be interesting to find that. I can't out. imagine yeah. them losing more than four in a row. Not with this staff if they stay healthy. Ludwig walked and popped the second. And there's the change up fooling Ludwig. You know the one thing that I do want to mention you know we, we talked about the rotation of the Philadelphia Phillies but guess what folks. The San Diego Padres own the best ERA in the National League with a 297 yo. Philly is 3 3 7. Right. Another pop up. So, how do you like them apples? On the 100th pitch of the night, another 1 2 3 inning for lefty Cole Hamels. To the seventh, the Phillies 2 0. Southern California's premier dental implant center by MTS. MTS moves me. And by Hughes Marino, because where you do business matters. Clayton Richard, 88 pitches on the night, goes into the seventh inning. Bottom three for Philadelphia. Ruiz Valdez and the pitcher Hamels to bat. Starts uh, Ruiz with a changeup. He's tapped to the mound and walked tonight. Sends this one shallow into left. Out goes Bartlett. In comes Ludwig. Oh. Bartlett, watch out. Just a lewd crashing into one another as Ludwig hit the deck just in time. And Bartlett, great concentration to make the catch. 
Well, two Padres up on their feet and uh, kind of a little bit of a smile going back to their positions. That's a good sign. Now, when Bartlett's going out, you know, it's tough. You're concentrating, and Ludwig, you know, really can't see anybody communicating right there. Jason's not saying anything. I guess my point is, you know, when you're running like that, you've got the crowd. Yeah, that's kind of like those in-betweeners, you know, really tough for Ludwig to make that play. Bottom line is they squeezed it for the out. And you're just glad nobody gets hurt. But Clayton Richard in a good groove here. Nine straight outs for Richard. Winston Valdez out on a good play made by third baseman Gonzalez. And safe on a fielder's choice tonight. Third baseman Gonzalez. Strike across to Cantu. Two away. And Hamels comes up. Looped a single over the third baseman's head and struck out. Well, but for those two walks that set the table for Ryan Howard's long triple, this could be a real pitcher's duel. Nothing, nothing. Philly's taking advantage of a wild mistake, and there's a Hamels hitting a ball the opposite way again. Ludwig gets it back in and turns the lineup over as Hamels two for three. And I'm sure he will be. Taking a little league lead one foot out the bag because remember he got picked off once again another elevated pitch That was the same type of situation in the third inning when he singled It was a pitch up around the belt buckle and it's easier just to elevate that ball to the outfield I don't care if you are the pitcher Well Hamels who was 0 for 4 in his previous three starts two for three tonight look at his lead <laughs> <laughs> After being picked off, <laughs> but I've seen lefties with good moves pick off a man with that kind of lead. <laughs> they figure, well, now I'm safe. <laughs> and you get mesmerized, and uh, <laughs> which happened the last time. He's got a three foot lead. Shane Victorino, single, a walk, and a pop up. He walked with after Hamels had been picked off in the third. He walked and so did Blanco. And with two outs, they both came home on the triple by Ryan Howard. One and two. So that base hit by Hamels breaks a string of 10 straight outs for Clayton Richard. <laughs> Jorge Cantu is giving him a hard time over there, but Cole is laughing right along with him. Fly ball to right, going to be tough. Out goes Hudson and makes the catch. Venable wasn't going to get there. No runs, a hit, and the Phillies leave their fourth man stretch half of the seventh at Petco. Bottom of the seventh at Petco as we go beyond the box score. Brought to you by Toyota Vel Cajon. We went green to save you green. Well, the Dodgers 
clubbed the Cubs 12 to 2. Uribe with four RBIs and a home run. And how about Annabelle Sanchez? Gave up a run unearned in the first inning. Walk Fielder's Choice Air. No hits until the ninth inning. Mm -hmm. Nine strikeouts. As the Marlins go on to a 4 1 win over the Rockies. Boy, you one hit that Rocky lineup. Yeah. You've done some pitching. And Annabelle Sanchez already has a no hitter under his belt in his career. Cameron Maben doubled inside the bag at third and struck out. One of two base hits for San Diego against Cole Hamels, who is into the hundreds in pitch count. 102 coming up. No one throwing in the Philadelphia bullpen, so. Hamels and the Phil's figuring that he's good for at least one more inning. On the inside corner. 91 fastball. Maven's double came on a 3 2 pitch. Hamels ahead of most of the hitters tonight. Ooh. Just a little low. And cutter. Been baffling these right handed hitters with that changeup and working very quickly, and maybe hardly set in the batter's box calls time. Another pop up. Shallow and right. Valdez calling. Now the Padres have now gone 18 plus innings without scoring a run against Philadelphia pitching. Well, actually, uh, 15 of those innings against Philadelphia. Then they didn't score the last three in Chicago. So the consecutive streak is more than two full games. Venable struck out and walked. Bunted by the mound. Beautiful bunt. Base hit. Venable. Uh, you just can't drag one better than that. See that ball check up nicely also? That was almost like a seven iron onto the green. Watch as Will squares. He bunted some backspin and that ball will just check right up. Well, once it got by Hamels, that yep. was an easy infield bunt single. Three hits now for the Padres. And Though they've been outgunned by Hamels, the time runs at the plate. Alberto Gonzalez intentionally walked and grounded to short. A changeup for a strike. Oh, he's thrown a lot of changes. Yep. Yes, he is. It's a great pitch and a fastball count. I mean, first pitch offering, guys looking dead heat, right? Number one. Cole Hamels pulls the string on the changeup. Fastball in right here. And a double play ball to short. Rollins, Valdez. And the inning is over. Two nothing. Philadelphia.
Top of the eighth inning. Placido Polanco, Jimmy Rollins, Ryan Howard to bat for the Phils. Polanco for two and scored a run after he walked, as did Victorino back in the third inning. If you're just joining us, that's the two runs in the game. Hamels led off with a bloop single to left, then was picked off. Then Richard walked Victorino and Polanco back to back. That'll be out of play off the first base side. And after Rollins had lined out for the second out, Ryan Howard down two strikes ripped the triple into right center field to score both runs and that's it. Two runs five hits for Philadelphia. No runs three hits for the Padres. Two balls and a strike. The last run that the Padres scored was back in Chicago in the sixth inning, and Ludwig doubled and Rob Johnson singled. There's a base hit, Polanco. You don't keep him quiet very long. Leadoff man on for the Phils here in the eighth. Richards pitch count now at 103. And action in that Padre bullpen. Big earn. Ernesto Frieri heating up. Padres need to keep the fills off the board here in the eighth. Two runs down. Give themselves a chance with two innings to go. Slider inside. Well, that was the 104th pitch by Clayton Richards. The most that he has thrown this year was against Cincinnati. At home back on the 12th he threw 107. That was that 11 inning extra, extra inning game. Ball two. 33,572 on a Friday night here at Petco. And we expect the crowd tomorrow night to be tickling around 40,000. Hope you've got your tickets. And trouble brews now. 3 and 0 with the leadoff man Polanco at first with a base hit. There's a strike. Good pitch slider in on the hands. Three and two to Jimmy Rollins. Three time gold glover. 32 years young from the Bay Area. Runner goes, ball four. For a single and a walk, and the table set for Big Ryan Howard again. That's the fourth walk by Clayton Richard. But Black and uh, Darren Ballsley with a left hander up. They want left hander against left hander here with Renteria giving the signs. I think this may be Clayton Richards' last hitter, regardless. 109 pitches. Let's say, hypothetically, he gets Howard to strike out. Let's just say you got righty Francisco, lefty Ibanez is struggling as well, and then righty's seven and eight. Softly hit. They'll get one there back to first, but Howard, as you saw in the triple, for a big guy, can leg it out pretty well. He's safe on the fielder's choice. As Polanco moves over to third. And here comes manager Black, and uh, he's going to do a double switch as he gives Tim Welke, the plate umpire, his changes. But quite an effort by this left hander from Who's Your Country. Goes 110 pitches tonight, allows six hits, four walks, and two of those four became runs. Chase Headley, well enough to come in and play third base, not in the starting lineup, but battling the flu. And here comes Ernesto Frieri from the bullpen. 
We're in the eighth, two nothing Philadelphia. CP block and brick build a dry stream bed in your yard using natural stone. Just call RCP today. They've got some great plans. Friere, who came up from Portland last year and uh, dazzled the Padres with his excellent work, adding to an already top bullpen, the best in baseball. And here's his numbers a win and a loss so far, almost 10 innings of work. Last yeah. time off for Ernie was uh, in Chicago in the seventh inning. One inning, he struck out two Cubs. That was at game two on Wednesday. First and third, he inherits one out, and Ben Francisco 0 for 3 on the night. Homered last night. Fastball strike at 90. So Headley. Will be the leadoff man in the bottom of the inning in the double switch. Hits in the pitcher's spot. Popped him up, but out of play. Back toward us. And Frieri is in the number eight spot. Another pop fly back into the mezzanine. Needs a strikeout. High fastball. Oof. Another fall back. He was on that yeah. one. Did you see Nick Conley? Nick wanted it up. He wanted it up around that maybe the bill of his hat. Nick wants it up, but mm. that's belt buckle high. That could have spelled trouble. First and third, one out for the Phils here in the eighth. Another foul back. All four have been straight back, in, which means he's right on these pitches. Just not scoring them up. Well, if you put a wrinkle in one, you better make sure that it's down and out of the strike zone. Don't leave it over the plate. Another foul. What the name of Jorge Cantu is going on? <laughs> Nick's glove off the plate and it leaks. Outer third and up. How many did Cantu foul off last night? Like Nine or ten? Yeah, it was a 14 pitch at bat, right? Before he struck out. Yep, 11 foul balls against those walls. There's a the foul back. 
Just did cue that one foul. On deck is Raul Ibanez. Well, we've seen a lot of fastballs, right, Dick? That last pitch was a breaking ball, a slider. Nick puts down number two. Got him. Fouled into the glove of Hundley. A slider. That's what the doctor ordered with first and third and one out. So with two gone. Well, that's what the doctor ordered. And Frieri writes up the prescription. And he follows through with it. Take your medicine. Ben Francisco. Strikeout dose from Frieri. Two away first and third. And Ibanez struck out, struck out, and tapped to the mound. So a long night for this veteran left-handed hitter. Over but low, ball one. Polanco at third. Howard at first. Popped up. Out on the outfield grass. Hudson and Bartlett. It's Hudson. Good job. Frieri comes in first and third. Faces two tough hitters. Gets Francisco to strike out. Ibanez to pop up. Still 2 nothing. Bottom of the eighth inning. Game show from our Channel 4 studio, Messrs. Weisbart and Scanlon. We'll give you all the details on this day in baseball and analyze our game tonight. Saquon Casino, get away for the day at Saquon Casino. Chase Headley bats for the first time. And quickly down on the count, two strikes as he came in in the double switch with Frieri pitching. Suffering from that virus hitting 219. Headley. Ground ball up the middle, base hit. That gets it started. Leadoff man on here in the eighth. Two strike pitch. So to the top of the order, and Jason Bartlett needs a hit to extend his uh, streak to seven games. He's grounded to third twice and popped to short. I'll tell you what. Flu bug my eye. Chase Headley aboard with a base knock. Nice piece of hitting Chase. You know Chase was so gentleman like today in the clubhouse. He walked by me. I extended my hand to shake his hand. Hey Chase. He did the old U to curve around me. No let's stay away. I'm sick. I don't want to get you sick. Bartlett trying to shoot that one to right field. A changeup. 
114 pitches now for Hamlets. And a right hander starts to throw in the Philadelphia bullpen. David Herdenden. He pitched last night two thirds of an inning. Smothered foul, another changeup. Hey, when the pitch count, as we see Herndon heating up, as the pitch count rises, Cole Hamels reaches back and thinks, you know what, I'm going to try a little easier. I might be losing a little bit on the fastball, who knows? So I'm going to pull the string and back off. He quickly finds himself ahead 0 2. In the dirt, another changeup. So that just sets up the fastball. It's a great pitch. Change up, change up, change up. Try to bury a fastball or a cutter on the inside part of the plate. Heads up down the third base line, Polanco. Got him. Another change up. Can you believe that? Four pitches, all change ups. And Bartlett goes down swinging. How do you figure that? How do you figure that as a, a hitter getting four consecutive change ups? Seven strikeouts now. And you know what's impressive about Hamels? That was the 117th pitch by the left hander, and it was great location. That's exactly where his catcher Ruiz was set up. So he is still hitting his spots with that pitch. Orlando Hudson has a single. One of the four Padre hits tonight. Grounded out and struck out. Representing the tying run. Hudson without a home run thus far this season. High strike, fastball. So you start thinking he's throwing all these change ups I'll sit on it and then you get the fastball. Yeah. Two on one. Jorge can two on deck. You know, it, it might take 120, 125 pitches for a pitcher to pitch a gem. It takes one in a count like this, three and one, for Orlando Hudson to crush a mistake. He didn't foul wow. tip. Another changeup. My goodness. Three one pitch. Three one changeup. Fouled away. It's almost a cliche when the southpaws on the mound, the, as broadcasters, to call him the crafty left-hander. It just <laughs> seems to fit. Sure. But he is all of that tonight. Yeah. 123 tosses. One out here in the eighth. <laughs> on the corner and. Played up by Walke on the fastball. Punches out Hudson. Eight strikeouts for Hamels. Change up, change up. Fastball. Right on the outside corner. Look at Ruiz. Doesn't even move his glove. That is a darn good pitch. So two out. Jorge Cantu. As we told you earlier, Cantu has three home runs lifetime against Hamels. But Hamels twisted him in a knot the last time up there using change ups and sliders, and Cantu didn't get a good swing. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Hit well, but right to the second baseman, Valdez. Inning over for the Padres in the eighth. No runs, a hit, a man left. Ninth inning, 2 0 Philadelphia.
Wade Wash through eight, two nothing. I know many of you already have your tickets, but there are some available tomorrow night at 5:35. The game three of this series and the Padres six-pack tube coolers given away to the first 25,000 of you fans that go through the turnstile. So come out and see us. Still tickets available, but Padres.com to get yours tonight. Freire, big breaking ball, Looked pretty good. Yep. He faces Ruiz Valdez. And Hamels or a pinch hitter here in the top of the ninth inning. Cole Hamels acting like he wants a complete game. High pop up off third. Headley. Right at the lip of the dugout for the out. Yeah, I know we've been talking a lot tonight about Cole Hamels and the effort. That he's putting forth but I'll tell you what. Clayton Richard pitches a little hard out tonight. Seven and a third, two runs in one inning. Just the one bad pitch to Ryan Howard, that triple that drove in two runs. And then Ernesto Freire coming in to get the strikeout in the uh, the pop up to get out of the ace. So no support for Clayton, but he pitched well tonight. He sure did. As has been the case almost all season long. The starting pitching has been yep. outstanding. Just quality start after quality start. One strike on Winston Valdez. Fastball misses one and one. A little uh, rustling of the crowd down the left field line, lower deck. As if uh, maybe a couple of fans uh, debating the. Uh, <laughs> the team they support. Out of play. One and two. So bottom of the ninth inning. We'll see whether or not Hamill stays. He's in the on deck. No, he's not in the on deck circle. She wants to make a call. Ross Glode is uh, apparently going to pinch hit for Cole Hamill's. Wow. Not a bad pitch, but it looked like he was off just a little bit. So two and two on the second baseman for the Phils. Ooh, almost hit him. Well, the fans certainly brought their enthusiasm tonight, chanting even here in the ninth inning, let's go Padres. It's you know, kind of a shame, you know, same kind of Feeling last night, an electric crowd and nothing to really cheer, shut out, and again tonight. And so few moments that have been exciting for them offensively. Maybe the ninth inning holds something special, the bottom half of this inning. Swung at ball four, three and two to Valdez. Well, with all those pitches, Hamels is going to let the bullpen try to finish up the shutout. Soft fly to the second baseman, Hudson, two away. The Padres have worn out Cole Hamels. They've driven him out of the game. Oh. Too many pitches. 126 wow. for Cole Hamels. And, and you know what the impressive thing about that is that he was spot on on his last pitch as he was his first pitch. You know, the change up down and away, throwing that fastball for a strike. Walk three, struck out eight, allowed only four hits. This is Ross Glode. Their top left handed pinch hitter off the bench. Sends that one to left. Ludwig giving ground and has it for the out. So Frieri comes in. Five men face, five men out. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Can Hundley, Ludwig, and Maven stir up some runs?
Told you all season long, every Friday, something special. A party in the park, and on Friday, May 6th, uh, on that night, the Padres will be hosting the Arizona Diamondbacks, 7.05 game. On May 6th, that'll be Padres Beer Fest. You folks enjoyed those uh, beer fests, a couple of them last year. Beers from 25 breweries in the park at the park, including some of San Diego's very best. Get your tickets now, Padres.com slash Beer Fest for Friday, May 6th against the D-backs. 30-year-old Ryan Madsen on the mound for the Phils, trying to get the final three outs in this 2-0 game. Nick Hundley 0 for 3 tonight. Takes inside. Madsen, a native of Long Beach, makes his home in Moreno Valley, California. Won six games last year under the pen. One and one. Good numbers early on for the big tall right hander. Fastball change cutter and a curve. He's got a darn good changeup. And he tops out about 95 96 on that fastball. Slinger. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cole Hamels has had a nice, soft, easy arm action. Mm -hmm. This man slings it up there. Buggy whips it. Two and one. High three and one. Scoreboard pleading for the fans to make noise. They accommodate three and one the count. Foul back. Well, Contreras, their closer. Remember, he went an inning last night. He recorded his fifth save. Gave up a hit, a walk, and a strikeout. Possibly on the shelf tonight. Ground ball toward the hole. Tough play for Rollins. The long throw. Got him. Oh, my. Hundley thought he was safe. What a throw by Jimmy Rollins. Let's take another look at that. See it just bang, bang at first base. Very, very close. You know, I think he got him, huh? It was close. One out. Ryan Ludwig walked and popped up twice. Wow, way out in front of that pitch. Big league play at shortstop by Rollins. Absolutely. Another ball pulled way into the dugout of the Phils and Ludwig down 0 and 2. Our bench coach Pete McCannon couldn't make the play. I'll get down under cover here. <laughs> the two times in a row, Ludwig's gone over there. All right, and a 55 foot one hopper, one and two. Change up. Yep. Maven would be next. That'll be out of play. We talked about how competitive this pitching staff is. The starters for Charlie Manuel and uh, each trying to outdo the other. Well, last night Oswald in the fills four hit shutout tonight. Hamels in the fills working on a four hit shutout. Up and in. Two and two. Change up or breaking ball. Well, here. you know what? He's got a heck of a change up. I'm going to guess he, he wants to try to challenge him. I'm thinking a good, hard two seamer down and in. Like I said, a change up. <laughs> in, <laughs> in the dirt, yeah. and Ludwig goes fishing. 
First strikeout for Ryan Matson. Good call, Dick. He did go with the changeup. See down there, you can see him how he turns it over. He buries it in the dirt to Ryan Ludwig. That looks like a fastball, knee high, right down the heart of the plate. Down to their final out. Cameron Maven doubled, struck out, and popped out. Slider misses ball one. Just a base runner and a swing away from tying it, but Padres unable to connect. High strike, one and one. Fastball, 94. Tomorrow, folks, five o'clock, our pregame. Tim Stauffer against Joe Blanton. He'll be there. <laughs> You'll be watching, won't you, young man? Over but low, two and one. Strike. 20th game of the season. They're a strike away from being shut out six times. They weren't shut out six times until they played over 100 games last year. Broken bat, ground ball to second. And they're blanked again. 2 nothing. The Phils have not allowed a run. A pair of four hit shutouts by this immensely talented Philadelphia Phillies pitching staff. Tough to swallow, but on we go, and we'll have the final totals for you as Charlie Manuel's team celebrates a 2 0 win. We'll be right back. <laughs> 